Um, okay, uh, I'd now like to introduce our next uh, pair of speakers. Uh, Penny N, uh, start off with an N, Penny Thor. Penny. First, uh, thank you to my Alex, Nina, and Toby and Alex for inviting me to come here to, to Goldsmith. It's, uh, it's a big pleasure to be here, and uh, uh, I hope that this can continue to some uh, collaboration also in the future. Uh, I've been assigned to talk on the topic of participation, impact, and design. Uh, and uh, I'll do that as uh, as interplay between questions of uh, contemporary ideas or ideologies about democratizing and innovation and the idea that's already been taken up say, uh, of, of drawing things together and if that even could mean opening up. So, uh, the drawing things together, uh, for those of you who uh, do not uh, uh, know this, which might be no one, uh, <laughs> but I, I put it in the slide just, uh, just in case. Uh, uh, Bruno Latour uh, gave a talk at the, uh, at the Design History Society uh, in 2008, uh, and uh, proposing the idea that, uh, or ending with a challenge that looked a bit like, uh, well, you've been so good over the, over, over the centers, you designers, to draw from perspective writing to, uh, to geometries, to prototypes, to mock-ups, to mixed media artifacts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, uh, and here was the challenge. What if these kind of skills were used to draw things together. Uh, so that's it about how the, how the challenge was put. And uh, so uh, in, in quote is said, what is needed are tools that capture what has always been hidden, mean the hidden practice of modernist in innovation. Objects have always been projects and matters of facts has always been matters of concern. So uh, so I tried to take that serious, that, uh, uh, challenge serious, um, what, what would it mean to draw things together? Uh, yeah. So the question would be, how can we draw things together? How can we gather and collaborate in and around design things? But I, my background is that <coughs> from the participatory design tradition, Scandinavia, 70s, early 80s, uh, uh, with at that time uh, the idea of democratizing the workplace. Uh, and one of the projects uh, that I had the uh, opportunity to participate in uh, was called Utopia. I was working with skill and hints and tools for printing industry. Uh, and uh, after the project, uh, MIT Technical Review wrote like, so the impact of Utopia is continuing to expand. And the idea that workers and their unions have an important role in the design of new technology is reaching a wider and wider audience. Today, Scandinavia, <laughs> tomorrow, perhaps the rest of the world. Well, we know that did not happen. <laughs> not even in Scandinavia. <laughs> uh, so, um, so at that time, it was the change from, uh, from uh, an older form of technology into new technology. It basically, was the risk of being uh, uh, made redundant in the workplace. That's what it was all about. So, this was for me and for many of us early work with mock-ups and uh, so here this was this one is actually the same one as this one still the mock-up only it's an exhibition early mouses uh, uh, early uh, graphic display screen uh, uh, and ways to go beyond uh, to, to, to work with games in the design and uh, there's the laser printer to organize uh, the collaboration between uh, journalists and, uh, and, uh, and, and graphic workers. I will not go into it. Uh, yeah, so, 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 so I, I will not talk about this, but uh, uh, since we're in London, uh, and uh, since it's did, it didn't, it didn't uh, 
continue uh, for the rest of the world, not even in Scandinavia. Uh, I met with when met Toby in in Trento. He we, we came to talk about my calling, and and I was reminded then about uh, that in the with this utopia project, and this is at the time when the GLC was operating in uh, in, in in London. Uh, so and Mike and and the, well, you had the uh, Great London uh, uh, Enterprise Board, uh, which Mike Coley was uh, operating on. And they had a company called Whitechapel uh, that did uh, graphic workstations. So actually, the, uh, the specifications from the Utopia project were negotiated and brought into a collaboration with Whitechapel. And they started to hire people. And then uh, GLC was abolished by that ship. So that was the end of that story. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really a side line that I was put to have. So uh, the mission then of bringing things together uh, is for us who are designers, I think, or coming to the design world, to, uh, to look at what things are. Uh, and again, as uh, Latour and others uh, have, been look, uh, have, been, have been suggested, uh, that maybe, maybe the, eti the etymology of the word uh, thing is of, of real interest to us here. So things uh, in the old days, in the etymology, uh, they were like in the Icelandic thing or, or further back. Uh, they, were, they were meeting places, they were assemblies, uh, they, were to, uh, they, they were events where people dealt with, uh, with, with, with issues, uh, of, of, of with matters of concern. Uh, and, but they were also specific places uh, and uh, so, uh, and uh, in addition to use uh, a concept from uh, uh, from Chantal Muff, we might say that these were places where you came together not because you agreed, uh, uh, you actually came together because you disagreed, but were interested in finding ways to uh, to, to deal with your antagonism. So she's then suggesting that this is, can be seen as kind of agonistic uh, public spaces. So I think that uh, things as agonistic public spaces, that's an interesting or important twist for us in thinking about what we're designing, what we're doing, uh, when we're designing. So uh, here are a number of design things. There at least the printer again, people, uh, drawings, So in short, uh, uh, what we deal with in the design are social things and ma material representatives or, or const <coughs> constituencies. The so things are socio-material assemblies, they are not physical devices, and design artifacts are participating representatives or constituents, uh, no, no kind of factory representations. And obvious maybe in a way or, or, or or a natural twist, but it has consequences. Uh, so, as Latour said, that object has always been projects, but, and this is an, a design take on it, projects are preferably performed at things. So, if projects uh, are seen as thinging, then it, it becomes what you do in when you draw things together is that you align, engage, and attach representatives in the life cycle of the design object or device. So you're designing a thing, a collective of humans and non-humans. Uh, and this is, this is uh, done, and I won't go into this picture, but, but I mean, in some way, uh, the initial object of design has to be constructed. Uh, that is, the participants have to be aligned around the shared the programmatic object of concern. Things have been to make, made uh, reportable. It be, must be possible with uh, through sketches, models, prototypes, etc., to manipulate them. And least but uh, but most important, uh, the design uh, it must be made into public thing and open to controversies among the participants in the project as well as outside through so works of ex exhibitions, public debates, or other forms. Uh, so uh, and his. So, so the strategy for participatory design, for a long time, I think, in, in trying to think uh, of this, uh, 
uh, was uh, was the strategy of, of, of projecting of focusing on on agonistic things on the assemblies before the objects and uh, what we heard in the in, in the talk in the morning from Michelle uh, actually on on the capability of the future in the presence of oh, the very strategy was to with the use of mock-ups, games, uh, etc., try to envision use before action use took place. Uh, but and, and the way to do that was simply to say that, well, by use of participating in their own process. So that's uh, that's the process. But uh, but design is then more and more moving out of the stable uh, situation of the factory or the, or the office, and so. What's happening uh, when design moves moves out of the box, and what does it move into? Uh, well, if we look around, it, this public space for design is then already occupied. It's occupied by ideas of of democratizing innovation, as say uh, with von Hippel and, and and the lead user, uh, with Shakespeare's idea of open innovation, with uh, with co-creation. Uh, with the rise of the creative class uh, uh, and, and with, with living labs as, as strategies. So when you move out of the factory into the public sphere, if in, and if you're thinking that innovation in interesting way, uh, in design could, in interesting way could take place there, it's an occupied space by, uh, by ideas, concepts, etc. So how do you navigate in that? Uh, and, and, uh, one way that we, uh, in, in the example that I, I, I'm, uh, I will show, uh, uh, that we've been going is inspired by ideas of, of social innovation as promoted by the Young Foundation here in the UK or by Etsy Mancini and his group uh, in, 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 in Milan and, and many others, but I'll come back to that. So, so now, and, and this is Besides the, the thing, the thing concept, or thinking concept, uh, uh, I'd suggest then that uh, we need a strategy that we would call uh, uh, design after design, or, or infrastructuring uh, things, and uh, which that means that I uh, have to say a few words of the infrastructure uh, uh, concept as we know it from from Lee Star, from Lucy, and from many others. Uh, so first of all, the, the idea of this thinking as infrastructure, not as, as fixed projecting, <coughs> and open up for potential design after the actual design uh, has taken place by deferring some design to actual, uh, to actual use and, or appropriation, whatever uh, form it would take. And from designing things aiming at useful products and services towards design to create agnostic spaces for future design things at use time. So it's this shift. And this then could be seen sort of in terms of configurable, open-ended, technical and spatial infrastructure, or which I think I would suggest more in terms of the making of open-ended prototypical practices or supporting this, supporting that. Hope to say a few more words on that. Infrastructuring then uh, as, a, as a verb, uh, suggest, uh, as, 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 as uh, we start, uh, Really uh, framed it uh, has to do with uh, with the, with relation and over time uh, and and in situ. So uh, it's, it becomes a question not of a substrate on which something runs, but uh, something that is ongoing and it's becoming in relation to organized practices. So, for instance, uh, it could over over extended time frames has to do with. Early on, things like selection, design, development, deployment, enactment, things that normally maybe were seen as design, but also intermediary roles like mediation, interpretation, articulation, and later on in, 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 the, in, in, in further use sometime uh, long, uh, uh, far, uh, far in the future as adaption, appropriation, tailoring, redesign, maintenance, and you can fill the, that list. So, so all of these activities over time seem to, and, and others seem to be involved in this. So with having the, the, the thinking concept or the thing with 
with the big T and together with the one with the small T and the infrastructure in uh, concept. I'll move into an example of, uh, of uh, how, how we've been trying to do this in the, in the city of Malmö where I, uh, where I live and uh, this is work uh, with colleagues and end use uh, in, in that city. So uh, the way we've been trying to draw things together moving out of the factory, the hospital, uh, or all these workplaces uh, has, ha, ha, as a design activity, has had to do with aligning actors across diverse contexts and culture through a continuous matchmaking process and quick contextual experiment. Sounds a bit odd maybe, but this idea of a very experimental approach, doing small, small projects, uh, uh, experiments and, and having long-term relations with, uh, with those actors. Uh, since three years, uh, we've started to build up something that we call Malmö Living Labs. And you see here, here we piggyback on the, on the Living Lab uh, uh, concept. There are two, more than 200 Living Labs in Europe. Uh, it's, you get lot, large EU funding. We are among the, the guys who get EU funding for doing Living Labs. So thanks for that. <laughs> uh, so, so, so this living lab, uh, we, we had the first experience with the small, with, with, with the one in the middle of the stage uh, in, 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 the, in the culture scene in, uh, in Malmö. Malmö is, Malmö is a small city, 300,000 people, but, uh, so it's, uh, but still we did not want to continue there, but see, could the lab go and explore in different directions? The factory I will not talk about, which is uh, our, uh, yeah, uh, it's a, it's it's a it's a meeting place to uh, to work with with uh, innovation ideas uh, uh, bottom up. But I'll, I'll leave that out, and I'll only talk about the neighborhood lab, uh, which is situated in Rosengård and Fossier, uh, with is uh, one of the biggest suburbs uh, in in Malmo. Actually, it's in the city. You could say have uh, more than 120 uh, people from 120 nations. Uh, when Fox Television describes it, it's a place that burns and it lo loses being there. <laughs> uh, so, but it, it's, it's, it's also a place full of resources and, and interesting uh, in many ways of a, if we're talking about, uh, about social innovation. So I'll talk about some of the activities in that lab. The, the overall lab strategy you could say is, uh, you could say this is, this is like bottom-up triple helix, maybe you could say. So it's not an agreement between the city and the, uh, and, and, uh, and the big companies and, uh, and the university administration. Uh, but it is collaboration with the city in, in specific projects. It is, uh, but the university is not the research with the big R. It's, it's organized with students, with teachers, with designers. So it's, it, it's completely open on the, on, on the university side. And it's also actually open, because it is a living lab, uh, to incubators, companies, public institutions, and of course, NGOs. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case I'll, uh, I'll just take you quick through, uh, it, it will be a focus on, on, on two, of, two NGOs in, uh, in, uh, in Rosengård. So yeah, I guess I said that. Rosengård is an environment associated with innovation and economic growth. Marginalized groups are high in employment, but at the same time a resource in, um, of intercultural competences. So the first group, uh, I'll say a few words about, five minutes, yeah, okay. uh, is uh, the, um, the, voice, uh, uh, the voice and face of the street. Uh, a, a young hip hop uh, uh, organization with, with kids, 15 to, to 18, um, and I'll talk about two of the two two of the of the experiments that they've been doing. That one, one experiment had to do with uh, appropriating or reappropriating the buses for their music uh, via the use of, of some Bluetooth technology, an RGRA, which is this. Uh, this group worked together with a couple of, of small design companies, uh, with a small design company, DOFI, but also with, with transportation companies like Viola, School and Trafik, and an IT company, 
and students, researchers, you know. And uh, also the important uh, participant here was uh, bl the Blue Promo Kit, which made this, uh, uh, this distribution of the music possible. Uh, I will not talk about the case as such, but just look at some of, of the controversies around this. One has to do with Veolia, the, the transportation company. Uh, they are strongly, invased, uh, strongly engaged in, uh, in uh, building infrastructure in Eastern Jerusalem, uh, which was a potential conflict with, uh, with these kids. So how was, could that be solved at all? Could they work together? And are they, are, uh, they, they still wanted to be, uh, to be uh, in the projects so and ended up with very specific things like the, the logos of the two organizations did not appear on the same page, for instance. So it's a very, uh, this kind of solutions. Uh, uh, since this became a research project later on and, and potentially something with uh, material rights, it became a big question of what rights do the NGO have in this? They've been participating in building it up, but uh, should another company run with it? Or uh, how, how, how do we deal with this? And of course, with the bus as such, uh, owned by a company, uh, could that be formed into a public space? Could it be reappropriated as a public space? Uh, I, I, I won't go into solutions to this because I'm, I don't think there are easy, quick fixes of this, but these are dilemmas that are part of these things all the time. Uh, drop one case on because they were the other case I'll talk about is uh, the Herbert uh, Women Association uh, which is a group of 200 women uh, and uh, started uh, eight years ago an NGO uh, that uh, oh, sorry. Uh, with, pe with people from most of them are from Afghan Afghanistan uh, but they're uh, uh, five, five, five different uh, different countries, and they are by the city of Malmo. They are seen as lost. Uh, maybe this is a relation to the girlies here. We will we, we'll see about that. But, but they they are all uh, all unemployed, uh, and uh, they are not considered a resource. And at the same time, they have intercultural competences. Uh, they they, uh, they have uh, they have interesting cooking skills. They have. Uh, interesting craft skills, but that is all uh, uh, not taking into, play, in, into place. So uh, in work with them, there's been two ideas now to only talk about one of them here that started to develop into a, 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 full, a full business. Is that they suggested that uh, there's quite a number of refer refugee orphans coming to Malmö in transit for, for three months. Uh, or more, maybe a year. Uh, and they've been traveling for like two years before they ended up there. Uh, and, and these women thought that they could, they could cook for, uh, for these kids. And they went to the city of Malmö, but that was not possible. Uh, they did not have this here. Uh, no. uh, but, uh, so, I don't know if this is part of the designer or the need and uh, then put on your university hat and you go together with them to the, to, to the city and say that, well, from a research point of view, it seems to be very interesting what these, what, what, what these, guys, what, what these guys are doing. So, also, and the city said that, no, we cannot do it, but there is a tender, this private company to which we outlet them. Maybe you can do it with them. So, um, so they start to build up a process where they start to cook to a, to, for the kids when they come to a tender. But first, the kids come to their, uh, the, the, their, uh, uh, their place. Uh, and then it turns out that this is much more a, a cultural uh, exchange, and, and the kids, as I said, they've been, they've been traveling for, for like two years before they come there, and they get the, their first home meal for, uh, for a long, long time. So they then require that the woman cook all the time, uh, but uh, there's no way that that's going to happen. Uh, so so that, that there's a little conflict that comes out of it. But, but they start to then to Develop this into the idea of, of cooking class for the kids. So uh, so now there is uh, one of the products is, is being developed is a, a 
cooking class recipes there and, and experiences that then put on, 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 onto the web and, and, and being used as, as one of the little things that uh, it goes with this. Uh, and uh, I won't go into a number of the other business ideas, but uh, this work is then again done with, together with, with that end of this, uh, this company, but also with a company called Good Word. Uh, it's a fascinating company, by the way, uh, and uh, the CEO, which is a really interesting uh, person. And so she starts to develop video business models uh, together with them, because now the idea is how can this be brought into something that is a sustainable business that they are, they are working on. Uh, and, say, and I won't be able to go much into that because we're completely running out of time. Uh, but to, to, to summarize with them, uh, it started out with the controversies. They are not seen by the city as a resource. Uh, it's very difficult for a, an NGO to work together, <coughs> to work with commercial services. Swedish laws and regulations, for instance, with how you cook, becomes a great uh, problem here. Uh, and last but not least, these women are now starting to have some success. And that is most of all problematic for them in their home relations to their husbands. So uh, the basic way for them to go about it is to completely downplay what they are doing, uh, because otherwise the, the whole thing could be jeopardized. So uh, and, and if you look at these experiments, uh, uh, the way that this, uh, it's been going on as design is drawing uh, things together uh, has been as very small, ongoing, and in situ experiments. No big plan, playing it, uh, playing it along as it goes, depending on on uh, on, uh, on, on, on on what's happening and uh, and how the issues arise. So there's not really a palpable uh, a future of a, a palpable uh, picture of. Uh, of the of the future in this, but it's it's much more ongoing and and, and, and engaging. Uh, and the last picture then uh, to ask if uh, is drawing agonistic things together uh, a question of democratizing innovation. I uh, have no answer to this, but the last thing I wanted to add is that the, at the bottom of the picture, these are the which I think we very. Uh, uh, very unfortunately or, or very uh, un unthinking uh, left out from the beginning is that this is of course financed. It's financed by the EU and it's financed by, by uh, something in Sweden called the KK Foundation. And they have very strong expectation of what's going to happen uh, uh, with this. They, they, they are not at all external to how things are being drawn together here. Uh, and uh, and um, I will not go into the controversies with them, which are which are are, are big and, and many, uh, but only say that uh, that's that's a, one of the things that we are rethinking now. So, for instance, when we were playing on to get on on uh, concepts or playing along with ideas of user-driven innovation, democratizing innovation, co-creation, crowdsourcing, uh, etc. And when you start to deliver in a way that does not look like uh, von Hippel or Oprah, uh, then they were not happy anymore. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, and of course, this is this is have to be dealt with. And I think I, I'll stop on that. Thank you. <laughs>